Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Model Shipwrights, and we're here with another Cracking the Box. Today we've got, for Merit Models, uh, the first kit that they've sent us direct anyways, uh, the U.S. Navy Elko 80-foot Motor Patrol Torpedo Boat Late Type. Now, I'm not an expert on this ship. I'm just going to be doing an unboxing and show you some detailed close-up uh, views of some of the parts. And uh, we, I don't know much about this, so let's, uh, let's learn a little bit about the, uh, the ship together, shall we? As early as 1922, the U.S. Navy considered using small, internal combustion engine-powered torpedo boats. Seventeen years later, in 1939, they renewed their investigation into the concept by requesting competitive bids for several different types of PT boats. Henry R. Stufen of Electric Launch Company, Elko, and his designers visited the United Kingdom to see British PT boat designs. While visiting the British Power Boat Company, they purchased a 70-foot, 21-meter, PB-70 design, and this boat was to serve as the prototype for all future Elko-designed PT boats. During U.S. Navy trials, the 77-foot Elko boat, though fastest, failed due to structural damage. Elko was forced to go back to the drawing board and revise their hull to a new 80-foot, 24-meter design. By war's end, more Elko 80-foot boats were built than any other type of motor torpedo boat. The wooden-hulled craft were classified as boats in comparison with much larger steel-hulled destroyers, but were comparable in size to many wooden sailing ships in history. They had a 20-foot, 8-inch, 6.3-meter beam. Though often said to be made of plywood, they were actually made of two diagonal layered 1-inch, 25-millimeter thick mahogany planks with a glue-impregnated layer of canvas in between. Holding all this together were thousands of bronze screws and copper rivets. This type of construction made it possible for damage to the wooden hulls of these boats to be easily repaired at the front lines by base force personnel. Late war versions of the Elko PT boat featured a T9 37mm autocannon at the bow, 40mm Bofors, 20mm Mark IV guns, Mark 55 inch rockets, as well as roll off Mark 13 torpedoes. All right, well, I hope you appreciated that uh, little bit of history, background, and photos. Uh, I could scrape together in a limited amount of time I have. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, open the uh, box up. Let's take a look at the outside real quick. This, this kit uh, is 148 scale. Um, the length of the kit is 508 millimeters. Width is 145, uh, almost 146 millimeters. The uh, kit is, is uh, rated for ages 14 plus. Uh, they have some shots on the side here of uh, what's included. You're going to get photo etch decals. And then on the other side, uh, they've got some color schemes with camouflage patterns and then some just brief background on the boat. Um, so let's go ahead and open her up, shall we? All right, so first off, you can see lots of nice light gray styrene. Uh, right off the bat, obviously, you notice the hull, which is really uh, looks really, really, really nice. Uh, there's uh, some pieces laid down inside the hull. Uh, but it's a one-piece hull design. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and carefully get it out of here. Uh, the bags actually rip open easily, so that's nice. Or open up easily. Uh, I'll take these parts out for right now. But uh, looking at the hull, it's a really thick uh, plastic, not at all very very sturdy. Um, there's some disconnect points uh, here, which I'll try to get the camera to cooperate. But those look like those can be sanded down. There's no missing, uh, missing media there. There's a little bit of detail on the side here. I'll try to take a photo of that too. Not really sure. Um, there's a little bit of discoloring in the plastic. That's what I'm trying to get the can. There we go. You can see that kind of little darker gray, but I don't think that's an issue. Um, and uh, the the rear, uh, I suppose this is probably where some of the shafts are coming out uh, for the for the propellers and so forth, I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just, there's some nice little detail up on the front here too. Um, can't say enough, that's a, that's a nice, nice uh, box there. Now the top of the, the top of the hull is here, so let's take a look at that next. And again, let me see if this opens up the way the last one did, uh, maybe on this side. Yeah, it's kind of sealed, but not, not 
All right, so here's uh, the top hole, which is fairly, uh, I mean, there's some surface detail here with little hatches and stuff. But again, nice, thick plastic, uh, very, very sturdy. Let's go ahead and do a test fit real quick since we have these two parts here. There are some uh, pins. There's a pin arrangement here. I can see where I'm pointing. So the pins go into the holes to line them up. And oh, there we go. And the back. Um, you can see just I'm holding the backs. Uh, I can see a little bit of a, you know, a kind of a bend there. But I think that's once you get clamps on this and get everything sealed, shouldn't be a problem. I'm not seeing any other fit issues other than that. So looks looks good. All right, let's set those aside. And so the next one here is the some of the. Um, I don't know if you call these bridge components or the some of the the up uh, the the upper structure, and again these are nice uh, maybe slide molded uh, parts that are all one piece, so very nice. And there'll there'll be some detailed photos uh, towards the end of the video. Uh, I can skip the unboxing portion if you don't want to see me commenting on stuff, and my my poor camera not wanting to to focus. Bad camera, stop it. I do have it on autofocus. Yes, I, I don't know why. I just it can't seem to um, to get that. Maybe maybe if I put a backing on it here. I've got my black mouse pad here. Maybe this will work. So will that make it quickly focus? Oh yes, it does. All right. So well, maybe that's my new method here. Then I'll just hold this stuff like this. So yeah, I mean you can see some nice detail there. There's the front. Um, that looks good. Um, let me go ahead and uh, pull out some other parts here. We've got. Quite a few uh, sprues, so the one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and although this is just a base, eight, nine, if I count the small ones, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So besides the pieces I already showed you earlier, there's 14 more spru sprues in here to quickly go through. Uh, I'm not going to pull all these out. Some of these you're going to be able to see. Uh, we'll open this one because it's got some nice detail on it. And again, they, they, they open nicely. I'm not, they're doing some kind of... Do these re actually reseal? No, they don't reseal, but that, that's a kind of a nice effect. Easy to get these out. So here's, uh, like the, for instance, the, the, um, the nameplate label here for the um, stand. And then here's some of the, just the various... Uh, parts. Um, you can see nice uh, railing detail here on these pieces. And uh, here's something that's probably a canvas and it's got kind of a canvasy feel or look to it. Yeah, that's not, ah, not working. All right. Next, uh, let's just go through again. We've got some more uh, railing pieces and uh, let's see if I can just kind of give you the basics here without obviously seeing too much detail, but you can see what's inside these like this. Um, and here's some of the, the uh, torpedoes that are on the... Um, they look nice. Um, lots of little detail, like the little uh, steering probably here. And some of the propeller blades, which seem awfully small. Are these like... I assume these would be something... Um, not quite what I'm thinking. These are probably like part of the... The atmospheric? No, I don't know. That's interesting. I'll have to look because I'm sure I'm sure this has bigger bigger propellers than those little things. Here's a uh, a boat, a small little boat that goes on the ship, and then some more more of the detail. That is the part of the uh, I guess radar assembly area or the radio probably too, and then some life rafts. Um, lots of nice little details. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a, um, a need for potentially figures. They show figures in the in the illustration, obviously, but there's no figures provided with this. So, hopefully, there's some figure companies that are thinking about working on a set of figures for something like this. Because in 148 scale, you can definitely do some nice uh, figure work. All right. So uh, the remainder are uh, copies of a lot of those, and then here's uh, ones that have again more detail parts. Um, with some of the, um, I think like the, the rings that go, the crew go in when they fire off some of the weapons, and I don't know what those are called to be precise. I like how they protected a lot of these with the, the styrofoam. Okay, so the, the last bits here beyond the plastic are, of course, the decal sheet that uh, we, sh we saw earlier, and these basically just have the flags, um, which 
I'm assuming you'd probably want to do something. I'm not sure what they are in the instructions you're saying, but you know they are showing um, like flags off the back that are that are waving and stuff, and I guess that's maybe what this effect is for. But um, you could do different things unless unless the unless these are for the hold on maybe these are for the I don't think they go on the stand. So yeah, let, let's take a look at that right now actually. So here's the instruction manual. Oh, before I do that, let's do the photo etch. So there's uh, looks like a photo etch and also a some kind of small oh, clear plastic I think for windows. So here's the photo etch. And on the back side, there's some clear windows. And let's look at the instructions real quick to answer some of those questions I, I had myself. So they have, in the instructions, they have uh, parts overlays. Pretty much everything's going to be used. Obviously, this is, this is as far as I know, uh, the first release of anything like this. Um, then they have a color insert with uh, different color schemes and uh, paint reference colors. Here we've got Vallejo, Mr. Hobby, Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrel. And that's one sided. So here are the three main propellers that I thought were there. And um, there's one of the guns going together. And of course the hull going together, which I'm surprised is such an early step, I guess. I guess there really isn't anything required in the, in the inside, so they just go ahead and put the hull together pretty much as step one, the top the top uh, deck and hull. And uh, then they can go through more of the weapons assembly in the, in the main superstructure with the lifeboat, uh, main guns, the, the radar uh, antenna assembly, then the main gun on the front, uh, and continuing on some of the structure in the torpedoes, and this all looks pretty well laid out. I don't see any difficulty or, or um, still curious where those other additional propellers were. Okay, now I look like a complete idiot because obviously they are the the propeller spinners on the torpedoes. Duh. I mean, how, how dumb could I be on that one? Torpedoes have props. I just wasn't expecting. <laughs> it's a torpedo boat, Jim. Uh, yeah. So uh, probably a bunch of you are laughing at me from the beginning on that one, but I will I will claim uh, utter stupidity on that and just uh, and, and you know or I'll cut all this stuff out so I look smart. Yes, because I care about looking smart. All right. Um, again, let's go ahead and take a look at the photos, and then we will of the of detail photos of these, and then we'll come back.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, close-up photos and uh, the unboxing portion of this video. Um, this kit is available for review. Um, I think we're going to ask for a build review on this one since it's such a substantial kit. And uh, potentially um, people, someone can blog it on our site as, as they're building it in preparation for writing out the uh, the build review or feature. It doesn't matter if you want to build a, do a build review or a build feature on this. And by build feature, we usually mean uh, an article that basically is how I built, how I constructed this ship to, you know, to finish state rather than like including painting and potential weathering or maybe even putting it into some kind of uh, environment like a, a diorama or something if you opted to do that. Um, whereas a review, a built review obviously is just the kit built. So one's, one's definitely more of a project than the other. But we do give people more time to do build reviews. A bit, excuse me, we t give them more time to do, we give them more time to do build reviews as well as a little bit more time to do a build feature. So, uh, that is uh, something that's out there. If you uh, check our our available sample sheet, which is on the front page of uh, Model Shipwrights, you will see any other samples we have available right now, which I believe we have a couple, not very many, but we do have a couple also in, in addition to this one. So uh, I will put a link, if I can remember, in the description or in the uh, the video as well as uh, uh, on the, uh, the main page. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave it below, whether you're on uh, our website or on YouTube. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.